for coming to the seminar. Um, basically, what Screen Excel is is what you can read here. It's a it's a kit, an upgrade kit that um, has a better display and speakers and LEDs, something else for stern machines with LCD displays. But before we introduce ourselves and we explain about the product, I wanted to have a little icebreaker and and have a little game with you if if you, if it's okay for you. So I will have a little quiz. It's going to be about historical pinball questions, and I'm sure the audience are good enough to answer them. So. Okay, the question is, do you know which was the first pinball machine that had a tilt mechanism on it? Does anybody can guess it? How old or who? It's very old, really old. It's from 1933. It was broker tipped from Gottlieb, and it looks like this, so it's really, really old. <laughs> it was uh, a difficult one, this one. We're going to get more modern in the machines. Now, the next one probably is the easiest one. I'm sure you know it. Which was the first pinball machine that had flippers? Humpty Dumpty, 1947 from Gottlieb, Humpty Dumpty. And they call them, funny wise, on the brochure, flipper bumpers. So they thought it was like bumpers you could manipulate somehow. It's, it's the funny names they gave at that time. So that's, that's the second one. Third one, which was the first machine having active bumpers. So bumpers used to be stick. They, they were not active. You could have uh, rubbers around them. But the first active ones with rebound system, does anybody know which was the machine that had them on? It was 1948 Saratoga from Williams, and they called them thumper bumpers. Okay, fourth one, it's which was the first machine having sling slingshots or slingshot kickers. Maybe not in the form that we know them now with the triangle. No one. Okay, <laughs> 1950 double feature from Gottlieb, and yeah, good. So that was the machine. As you can see, they were not typical slingshots, but they were all around the machine on white rubbers. So, five, the first moving target on a pinball machine. That's not an easy one, too. It was on Magic Clock from Williams, 1960. And it was called, yeah, the moving target, as you can see on the brochure, right in the middle of the play field. Six one, first machine having a drop target. Not drop targets, but the first with one drop target on the play field. Okay. <laughs> it was back up on 1962 from Williams. And it looked like that. As you can see here, it was clearly published on the brochure, too. It was right in the middle. So you hit it and went down for the first time. OK. So it's going to be eight. Don't worry. It's finishing. <laughs> Seven one, first machine with spinners. Yes. And the funny thing about Swing Along from 1963 from Gottlieb is that they were not called uh, spinners. They were called swinging targets, because for, the, for them was a target that you could swing. You know? And then later on were called spinners. But at the time, it w they weren't. So, and the last one, which is more related to what, I, what we came here today, <laughs> it was which was the first machine with a digital scoring uh, display. That's not an easy one, because I was surprised to, to learn that the first machine was a French one from a company called Rally, Rally Girl. It was the first one having this sort of uh, alphanumeric display based on Nixie tubes. So that was the origin of digital displaying on pinball machines. Oh, that's a very technical question. Yeah, but I can look that out if you want for you. <laughs> okay, so that's the that's the summary of the little game we had. Hope you liked it. So now let's let's introduce ourselves. So this is we three. I'm here with Juanjo. You can see the the man on the on the left side, and on the right is Fernando, which is sitting down there here, raising the hand. They together uh, run a company they founded called Two Pinball. They are one of the two top two distributors of pinball in Spain, running almost all the brands existing for Spain and Portugal, actually. And, uh, and yeah, and they are the, the creators of what I'm going to present here. And um, let's say I'm just a humble friend that I'm helping them because I speak a little bit English. So I'm doing the presentation. And well, I, was, I am a customer and become a friend, too. But me, myself, I have, well, that's the website from to Pinball, by the way, all the machines they distribute. And I, have a, I run a two channels in Instagram and, and YouTube, and I promote Pinball in my country, and I also promote Expo. This is my fourth participation and my third presentation. Since I was blessed to meet Rob in Barcelona, and we made friends, and since then I'm coming every year, so, <laughs> so it's f really fantastic. So this is we, and let's talk a little bit about the product itself. I'm going to continue playing with you, if you dare. Uh, but now we are going to make questions just related to displays in the world of Pinball. So a little bit also of history. The first one we already saw was Rally Girl from, from, from France. This we, we said already. But which was the first machine to have alphanumeric scoring display? 
Hmm, good, maybe. Uh, what I found out, it was Chicago Cubs. In a di meaning disp a display like this one. I don't know if, yeah? M maybe, I mean, I'm... Okay, so, good. Next one, and look at the, the ages are coming up and up as we, as we move on. No? First DMD, the scoring display, checkpoint. checkpoint. Yeah, you're right on that one. 91, checkpoint from day days, still the little DMD, the thin one which was the first machine to have a video integrated into Playfield. No? Uh, integrated? Yeah, um, no, I mean, um, yeah, with... Caveman. Caveman, okay, maybe you got me there, because I was more thinking on, a, on th something way more modern, which was Revenge from Mars <laughs> from 1998, but you're right, maybe it's the way I make the questions, but you're right, you're right, we, we're both right, yeah, <laughs> good. So that's Revenge for Mars. And I always thought why they didn't continue now, t many years later on with this sort of thinking, because I own a Revenge and I think it's amazing. Anyway, keep on moving. The first Pimo machine with an LCD display. Uh, wow, you got, <laughs> <laughs> you should be here. <laughs> New, ah, the new canasta, okay. Well, maybe you're right, but okay. I thought it was the Wizard of Oz. No? Really? Okay. Okay, you got me there, so you, you win. <laughs> 2013, but anyway. And they, they were er before 2013? Yeah, they were. Okay, guys, you got me there, so sh should I stop now? or? <laughs> it's One is okay, two I should go. Okay. Anyway, so we got the immense, when they started, I mean, with this 27-inch display, this is the, m the modern way where you can pull the screen out of the back box, and that was the original one that was sticking to the, to the back box, but okay. And then many people think, what, was it Stern? Was it J JJP before? And it was JJP because the first from Stern was three years later, Batman 66, I hope. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. And they stick to this size, and this is the size they have, and this is why we're here. Okay, so that's the end of the second game. No more games, <laughs> no more games at all. So how important, how relevant are displays nowadays? We'll see. If you look at this picture, you see clearly that they are very important. I mean, in our lives in general, but if you look about pinball, you have lots of displays on the play field. You got them vertical, you got them tilted, you got them flat, you got them in all positions, you got them on aprons, you got them on toppers, you got them uh, on top of toppers m m m with litter boards, and you got them on, on your handy to control insiders. So I would say that uh, in general and in a few words, and thinking on catching new generations, because this seems to be a joke, but this is reality. You go to a restaurant with young people and you see this. It's kind of crazy. In one word, they are very relevant, this place. So they are. Um, so let's have a look about uh, how are the different manufacturers playing with LCDs on their pinball machines. So if you look at the different manufacturers, you got the 15.6ers, which I got a new one at the end now, which, were, which are Stern, Spooky, and American Pinball. They both play with this sort of pinball sizes. Then you got Pinball Brothers with a little bit higher screen display, 18.5, and this is the size that we are offering in our kit. Then you got the huge, immense jersey jacks with 27 inch, which almost covers the whole back box. And last but not least, something I had to update just a few days ago, it was Barrels of Fun, because they have not one screen, but two, in the, which I think it's great. On the top, they are in the club of 15.6ers. Below, it's a 14.9 inch display which I think it's great because it's, mm, it's incredible. It's additional gameplay, it decorates the end of the machine instead of a regular uh, mirror or whatever. I think it's, it's um, uh, more playable, let's say, in the, on that sense. So, so this is a little bit the main, main manufacturers. Yeah, Dutch Pinball. Do you know? Because that's, uh, the screen is a little bit in between. It's like in, yeah. in between DMD and LCD. I didn't know if... Mm-hmm. Would it be something like the 14.9 on the, on the barrels of fun? Or more or less, right? May, maybe a little bit bigger? No, maybe not. Around that. Yeah. But it's true, we could put Dutch, like Big Lebowski here. Yeah, but I was po so just thinking. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, no, no, <laughs> that's great. I, interaction is really good. Questions or something? Ah, picture, no questions. You can stop me anytime. If you have any comments or whatever at the end, I'm gonna give you time to make questions, but if you wanna stop me, don't worry, I have no problem. So, keep going, and now, yeah, let's talk about Screen Excel. What does Screen Excel mean and offer? So, what it is, it's pretty simple. It is a display, very important display, and speakers upgrade kit for Stern machines from Batman 66 onwards. It offers moving from the original 15.6 size to a much higher 18.5 inches LCD display, adding a higher, higher quality four-way Pioneer speakers, on those speakers, we mount APP-controlled responsive magic LED strips. And by responsive, we mean there's an application, we'll show you later, that you can control everything. You can make patterns, you can have solid, you can have uh, moving things, and you can have them totally connected to the gameplay. So they respond to the sound of the machine. And the APP has memory and remembers, and you can save different games. So if you have different screens on different machines, that you can give names to each configuration and e every, every time you, you start a machine, it will remember the last configuration. You will see later on. So at the end, it, it has better looks uh, and there's someone in the expo will tell you where they are. Better sound and at the end, better gameplay. So when you play a game with a bigger screen, in my experience, you have a better gameplay. And advantages of the product is that installation is Super easy, we've created already lots of videos in English, well, one video that you'll have a, a look right now in five minutes. Um, so it's really easy to install. We, you can also easily swap them between machines. So if you put it in one machine and then you sell the machine and you wanna put it somewhere else, you can just move it around. Or you have one and you wanna play around with different machines. It takes like, if you know how to do it, like maybe 15 minutes, maybe 20 to swap it. So really simple. Connections, parse screws, and very easy. All the components needed for installation are included in the kit, so you don't need nothing else. Also, we keep two original parts, which is important, the lock. The lock, it's the same lock. You take it from the old panel, you put it in the new one, so it's the same lock system. And you can take the plaque of the machine, where you got Pro Edition, Premium Edition, you can unscrew it and screw it back to this kit that we bring. So it's, it ends up looking exactly as the original one with a bigger screen, thinner, thinner speakers, because screen has more space, but it's really forward, very easy. And as we said, it's uh, com totally compatible with any Stern machine from Batman 66 onwards. That's basically it. And maybe the, the lemma would be size matters, and it really is. I do have four Stern machines, and all of them have this screen Excel, and I, would, I could not come back to the old. When I see it and I put it back, I go like, oh my god, this is so small. Really, there, it makes a difference, okay? So, this is how it looks like. Yeah, this is an example on a, on a beautiful James Bond premium edition. This is in Barcelona in a very big museum we have on the outskirts of Barcelona. And you can see here uh, how it looks. It's, uh, it, it doesn't touch anything. The back glass is the same, the box box is the same, the plague is where it should be. Now the, the, lock, the lock is on the right side. You don't see it here very much, but it's on, on top of the, of the uh, right speaker. And the left part is, is, is held by a very strong magnet. So there's a magnet on one side, lock on the other one, it goes bloom completely. And that's it. You have a clearly bigger screen to play with the game. So, more things. This is the, the speakers that we mount, the Pioneer speakers. I'm not going to go through all this because it's extremely technical, but I'm going to play a little video which lasts seconds, see if it sounds good and if I can move it to the proper screen. Here. This is the Pioneer TSA 4670F speaker package. The package includes a pair of four-way, four-by-six-inch coaxial speakers. The woofer is four-by-six inches. The mid-range is one and five-eighths. The tweeter and super tweeter are both three-eighths of an inch. Frequency response is from 35 hertz to 42,000 hertz. Maximum power handling capability is 210 watts, and nominal power handling is 30 watts. So that's the description of the images. Okay, go back to the presentation. So that's a little bit of technical details on the speakers we mount on this kit. And this is the application itself. This is application called LED Cord. You download it easy on App Store or, or Google. 
and uh, and yeah, you, you get inside, and first thing you can do is you can have different settings, different configurations named by the machine you are having the screen installed. If you have one, you can have one. You can name it Screen Excel if you have one, or you can have the name of the game, and you know which is the pattern for each one of the games you have. You can have multiple names here. And then you have different ways of, example of patterns. This is one example, playing with intensities, colors, patterns, whatever, of course. This is one example. This is another example of pattern. You can have solid colors if you want. If you want the color to be stick green, dark, glowing, whatever, you can regulate this completely. Or you can have these sort of fusion things that, and you can make it pattern-wise so you decide what it does, or you can leave it on responsive mode and it will go with the sound of the machine. So in attract mode, if the machine is not making any sound, it will be off. The moment the machine has any sound, boom, it starts blinking. Okay? And as I said, there's memory. So it remembers also the latest configuration the last time you played. So that's the app that controls the, le the LED strips. And let's see a 15 minute video on Screen Excel and how it's installed and how it plays. Okay? Let's go. here in the Museum of, uh, of uh, Sanauja in Barcelona, which was presented last year on the Expo. I'm here with Juanjo. Juanjo is, uh, is one of the two partners of Tupimbol, and he is, let's say, the technician behind the development of this amazing kit. Hello, Juanjo. Hello. And he's going to show you through the installation of this amazing kit. Uh, but before that, let me, just, let me just show you once more where we are. This is, this is heaven, <laughs> heaven on earth. Okay, just to understand, we are going to put this in a beautiful James Bond uh, premium edition and it's going to look even better than it looks. Okay, so Juanjo, uh, you can go on. Puedes empezar. Most important thing, of course, is to have the machine turned off, obviously. And so first of all, obviously open the door. We need to remove the back glass. First thing we need to remove is the cable we're going to use. This cable is very important. You need to take it away with very, very, uh, very carefully by pressing the two uh, sides of it, and then it, re it goes off really, really simply. But you need to make sure that you're really pressing this in a nice way, because if you pull from it, you might break the connections. All right? And then there is the second one here. Also, this one, this one is easier. It's smaller, and that's all. We remove this white piece from the strap, take it away. And we, for now, we just leave it aside, okay? We will, we will see later what we use. This is the, the speaker's connection, the audio connection for the speakers. And again, we have to remove it. Fine, once removed, we have it aside. And we are just, let's say, freeing the original panel from its cables. And then we have, again, another cable here. Let's go around to see it better, okay? This is the ground, okay, that needs to also to be removed. It's very important that below the screen you put something to protect it, not to not to crash it with the with the cabinet. And once protected, now it's time to remove the screws that we need to remove, which basically is those two ones that have the tensors of the of the panel. So we are removing now the two screws that fix the the original panel to the back box. It's just two screws, one on each side, and it's important to say that these are the only two screws that you need to keep, actually. I mean, I said before you need to keep screws, but actually you only need to keep those two because the new panel is going to have all the screws that you need in terms of speakers, tensors, uh, or whatever. So, But these two screws you need to keep because the, the fixing is the same. So we take the two screws away, keep them aside, Well, and then all the panel comes off. And as the, the panels, uh, the cables were removed before, we just keep this panel. That's great. You can use this panel for whatever. If you want to keep it, save it, sell it, put it on a virtual pinball machine. So we're going to do the unboxing process of the product. Uh, basically, take uh, the seal, and it's a very simple box with uh, protection. You will see, very well protected. And inside, again, well, well protected. We got all the, the panel. 
which comes out in one single piece. So we're just yeah. taking the panel out of the box and we take the black plastic and this is the, the complete panel. Of course, the, the screen has still a, a, a film of protection and as you can see, it comes all in one piece and if you turn it around, everything is soldered, connected. You really you will see, you don't have to do much. Uh, on the one hand, of, obviously you have the Pioneer speakers here on both sides, right and left. Thinner, of course, because the screen is bigger and you have less space, but at the same time, they look more, more fancy in a way. Okay, great. As you can see, we are filming this in a, in a museum full of machines and probably you will hear lots of noises, but it gives this pinball touch, which is nice. And then, yeah, this is the controller of the LEDs for the speakers. Um, this is, the, of course, the screen with its board, a little board controlling the screen. And then there's a cable that goes to the power supply of the of the back box of the machine and the other cable here goes up also on one of the boards of, of the back box and this is the connector for the speaker so as you can see three uh, three connectors very easy one for the speakers one for the screen one for the leds so we just and place the two panels one on top of the other so you can see perfectly the differences on the layout and on the size of the screen below is the original one of course we will remove this plaque and we will put it up um, so we have the same stickers. Everything can be placed on the on the one on top. But uh, here, as you can see, the display uh, it's clearly bigger. As I said, 15.6 to 18.5 plus the speakers, and you know inside they have these plastics that will illuminate with uh, with the LEDs later on. But before we install it, we wanted you to show you the physically how it looks different. And we're gonna unscrew it. Very easy. And we're going to keep it aside and later we're going to screw it again on the, into the new panel. Unfortunately, in the, new, in the new panel, there is no place for this sticker. You can remove it and place it somewhere else, but not on the, not on the new panel. But Turn around the, the panel. And, and we are going to, uh, to unscrew the, um, this lock. Because the lock we're going to use. The only thing we're going to replace is one of the pieces of the lock. And now with another... Okay, that's it. So the in the Screen away. Excel kit, what you need to do is use the same lock, but we are going to replace the old, this old piece, which was straight, with this one that has uh, an L form in order to grab uh, from l longer, let's say. Okay, so Juanjo now he's going to uh, rebuild the, the new lock, just taking the different pieces. You place it in the, in the hole of the new kit, which of course has been shifted from the, from the middle into one of the sides of the, of the panel. Okay, we need to tighten this, of course, it's very important to make it not, not to be loose. And now, as I said, we replace, we put aside the original one and with the same screw and with a new piece that grabs from a longer distance, now we screw it straight into the panel. That's all we need to do. It's extremely, extremely. So we are now uh, starting to remove these two screws because we are uh, going to place the magnet here. The magnet is one of the main holders of the new kit. The magnet goes into the left part of the panel and the old uh, lock with the new piece is going to be on the right. So, but, and now it's time to place the magnet. This is the magnet, this piece that will comes included with the kit and with also special, uh, a bit, little bit longer screws that you will also find on the package. So we put it here. One is for the, for the famous tensor. So this is it. Uh, with the two screws, the one on behind is for the tensor and the second one is just to fix the magnet completely. And this is the way it looks when you have screwed finally. Again, with the two screws that comes with the, that come with, uh, with the panel. With so the, the, next, the next phase is we have brought the, the kit, the panel, the screen Excel, and we have placed it using, of course, the same holes that hold and fix the panel into the back box, okay? One and two. That's it. Now the panel is fixed into the back box, the new one. Now we're gonna go for the different for different uh, connections. First one, uh, we need the ground, the ground cable that we took away. We're going to put it 
So we put the ground cable into that corner one using the washers and using the screw. So once we have fixed the, the ground cable, as you can see, we also put a little sticker with GND so to make clear that the cable has to go there. Okay, we're gonna go for the next uh, phases of the connections. Now, very important is that, is that we are going to, um, to take these two cables here. One is going to be used and the other one is not. The one that's going to be used is this one, obviously, and the other one, the little one, um, that goes up, 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 up to the, um, to the board here. Okay, you need, to, you need to take it out. And there's two options here. You can just leave it right there and keep it together with the other one inside the machine or you can just remove it and put it aside. It's up to you. But important is that that one is not going to be used. The one that is going to be used is the one that comes out from the board here, all around, very long cable that we have placed, and it's going to be in the same connector that was the other one that we just removed in the board. Okay? And of course, what we're going to do is we're going to put the cable all through the different holders, to have it nice and tidy. Okay. Now, next, we are going to connect the, the speaker cable, same as we did before, but now we're connecting it. Put it right there, easy. And now we go to a very, very important part. As I said, these two cables, one is not used anymore, the little one, and the one we're going to use is this one. Very important thing is when you remove it, we have said before, we need to press on the sides of this cable, and when we insert it, we need to make sure that we are putting it in this position, not in the other one. This is the, the right position to be placed, very important, okay? So you just put it inside, makes a little click, and that's all. And the cable that we don't use, we just put here and we leave it aside. But as I said, we can, we can remove it and take it away or we can just leave it in here, the one we don't use. And basically that's all. We got the speakers, we got the screen down here, we got the ground cable there. And now one cable is left, which is the one that goes to, uh, let's say, power the, um, the LED strips on the speakers. And we're going to place it on that connector right there. This little one with three pins, that's the one it's going to go. So I'm going to put it in. That's it. So now we have LEDs, ground, screen one, screen two, and speakers. And up there, the only thing we did is remove the original cable and replace it by the new one. That's all we have to do in terms of connections. Okay. We are going to put the tensors on these screws right here using the screws that come with a new panel. You can see now the screws are well placed, both of them. Tensing, we have removed the protection below because the, now the panel is whole. And that's it. We're going to close the, the panel. You can see a spectacular screen. And we are trying that the lock is really pulling from behind. You can see it better here, that it completely holds. Very important is in order to download the application that controls the LED strips on the speakers uh, inside the panel, inside the kit, on this uh, LED controller, you will see here a QR code that you need to use in order to download the application that controls the, the LEDs, okay? Just, okay, uh, so now we are putting back the, the back glass on the back box. Great, we can now finally close the panel. We try the lock. As you can see, it holds very, very strongly. The magnet on this side, the lock on the other side. Okay, and also, Another important part is that using the same original screws, we are going to screw again the, the pinball plate or plaque back to the machine with its back glass, and you can see how nice it looks. Great. So here we go. Let's uh, start the machine. This is, of course, the, the last part of it. You can see the, the LEDs of the, of the speakers shining, and of course, you, there's, a, there's a predefined pattern here, but you can change that it, it can be moving according to the music and the sound of the machine or you can have your own patterns defined 
we will show you later on the application how this how this works but here we go as you can see uh, the screen is clearly way way bigger than the original one so in order to uh, to set the maximum brightness of the screen of course we have opened the coin door we have entered the settings menu you go to adjustments you go to spi and you go back uh, to setting number 90 94 setting 94 and the trick here is that it's on 7 which is the maximum out of the stern factory but this screen is has the inverted brightness so in order to have the maximum brightness you need to bring it down to 2 which is the lowest okay install it and then go back go back go back and and as you can see here now that the screen is way way brighter than before but again Okay, one comment to the video, hope you liked it, is that uh, we just realized that Stern machines from the original code, so the original code that comes out of the factory, they don't have a brightness setting. So you need to update it to, I don't know if the latest, but one of the, um, the next codes in order to make the settings menu enlarge to number 90 something, because at 94 is the setting where you can change the brightness of the screen. If you're on original code, you will not have this option. And therefore it will work, but it will be on the lowest brightness. It's an important point. Okay. So we're we're finishing. If you want to check the, oh, up. yeah. If you want to check the the sp screen excels at Pinball Expo, we have two. There's one when you get right in uh, starting in in the main vendor hall on the Rob's booth. There is an iron. There is a Stranger Things and there is an Iron Maiden premium. On that one, there is a there is a screen excel installed. And the good thing is that you can check and compare the sizes, which are pretty obvious. And then on the booth of uh, the Electric Playground, this is the company that does these awesome toppers for Twilight Zone and Godzilla. You will have that Godzilla, that's also a machine from Rob. Uh, the the topper, the the Screen XL, it's there. Um, so it's there. You can check it. So if you want to check them, uh, go and have a look. And and on those ones, you will see also the QR code that I'm going to show you in a second, which is this one. So where to buy it? This is the main question. So this is something we are we're launching. Uh, and we are, let's say, open to USA distributors to distribute our products because we are not going to do this straight and directly. So this is why we came to the expo and we are going to have some contacts and, and we'll see if anyone's interested or so these discussions we'll have. So at the moment it's to be, to be confirmed, but it's going to be through an, a, a USA distributor. Availability would be early 2024, so in I would say two, three months. Um, and the final price is not yet confirmed, but worst case scenario for final price to the public, it would be slightly above $1,000. So we believe that this price, I mean, given the current pinball prices or topper prices with such an upgrade of display, audio and LEDs, something that increases gameplay and it's right in front of you, it's a reasonable price. Actually, uh, as I said, I do have it on mine and, and I think it makes a difference. So if anyone's interested, there's this uh, QR code here you can scan and it's going to take you to a place where you can drop your contact information and we can get in touch with you in the moment we get a distributor or whatever to distribute the product here in the USA. And I think we're coming to an end. Do you have any questions at this point? You like it? You don't like it? <laughs> Warranty. Well, ¿qué garantía de tener el producto? One year, one year, yeah. Yeah, one year. Yeah, for the moment we we had the of course evolutions of this product. At the beginning there were no uh, no no LEDs on the on the on the speakers, but this is like the one model with everything possible we can bring, which is LEDs. The plague screwed not because in the original there was no space, so we had to stick it somehow. But mm, I don't. Can you It's going to be one single model with the best you can have. So, 
everything, anything. Yeah, yeah, all of them. Of course, on an alley, you know that the speakers have already the Kenwoods and with the colors, so maybe the display would increase, but maybe people would go like, okay, maybe the sound, whatever. I would put it anyway, but definitely pros and premiums are the, the targets here. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Pros, premiums, definitely. You can, yeah, I think in general, yeah, the use of the speakers in Stern could, could be better, I would say, yeah. But you can go and check it because, as I said, you got Stranger Things and Iron Maiden next to each other, and you can immediately hear and, and get a game and go, okay, that's, that's different. So you mean to uh -huh. mm -hmm. <laughs> yes of course, of course. Yeah, no, that's definitely o an option. Of course, you can more or less on your own because we are not offering this. We don't have a kit only with uh, upgrade of four speakers, but definitely you can go replace the original ones, keep the the same the same screen, the 15.6, and and go for it. But what we offer is the complete finished kit, and we have everything or or nothing. Let's say. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. But that's a good point. I mean, actually, this is why we made it so simple or easy to swap it between machines. So if you have, for example, two Sterns and you have one kid, you have it in one machine. The mo if you want to sell that one, you put it in the other one, sell it with the original, and and get your value on the on the on the new machine. You know. But yeah. But it's. Welcome. Okay, I think that's all. The last, oh, sorry. Okay, let me ask this, uh, let us show you. It's it's determined by the, by the by the graphic card of Stern and by the settings of Stern, so the it's the same resolution. We cannot increase it because it's let's say uh, dominated by by the program itself. Hmm. No, it's it's the same, just bigger. Yeah. 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 We didn't want to we didn't want to manipulate the original thing. Yeah. Yeah. Plus. Exactly, and also, yeah. and also to avoid risks with updates and upgrades, so that when you update the code, that it detects something's wrong. So we kept it the lowest possible to avoid problems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the last thing, Rob was here a minute ago. I don't know if he's here still, but he's outside. Well, I wanted to thank him again because the slot he gave us is amazing. One one p.m. on a Friday, it's prime time, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, thank you so much to all for participating, and hope you like it, and hope you buy it. <laughs> Have a nice day. <laughs>